Doom the Dark Ages was just revealed at the 2024 Xbox Games Showcase. No! Doom Eternal was one of my favorite games of the past decade, and I'm so excited to see what id Software has up their sleeve for the Dark Ages. In this series, I'll be playing all the mainline Doom games in release order, skipping over Evolution and Plutonia, starting with the original Doom from 1993. Couple quick notes, this playthrough is on Hurt Me Plenty, the normal difficulty. I'm definitely no expert, I'm playing this on the console port with no mods or add-ons, so sit back, relax, grab your shotgun, and let's get right into this. The first level of Episode 1, Knee Deep in the Dead, is Hangar, an absolute classic. With the 8-bit metal soundtrack blasting in my ear, I run around shooting zombies with my pistol. The combat feels amazing. The feedback when you shoot an enemy is perfect. They make pain sounds and can get stunned from your shots. The music is a not-so-subtle ripoff of classic metal bands like Metallica, but I don't care. It's just awesome. Making my way to this room, we can see some toxic floors and our first demon enemy, the Imp. He shoots a fireball projectile that's pretty easy to dodge, but regardless, he's the biggest threat in this first level. After taking them all out, I run to the exit door and the first level is over in less than two minutes. Level 2, Nuclear Plant, is a step up in complexity. After clearing the first room with all these zombies, I ride the elevator up to grab the shotgun. The Holy Boomstick, the granddaddy of all satisfying video game guns. This shotgun is so freaking fun to use, let's put it to work. These dark hallways are so creepy. If it weren't for the groovy music playing right now, I'd be a little scared. After delivering some sweet justice, I find the exit and it's onto the toxin refinery. Here we see the zombie shotgunner, a tougher version of the zombie soldier, but at least he drops some shotgun ammo. One of my favorite things in this game is to use these explosive barrels to kill demons. Oh my god, that is so satisfying. Environmental hazards are a serious problem in this level, so be careful not to fall into the damaging toxic sludge. When I grab the blue key, the lights go out and I'm ambushed by enemies. Moments like this are why I have trust issues. The next level, Command Control, starts off with a bang as I blow up these poor imps with a chain reaction. Dropping down into this toxic sludge trench, I find a secret rocket launcher. Nice. Entering this room, these walls raise and a bunch of imps come flooding out. After taking them out, I get the chain gun and the blue key. The chain gun uses the same ammo as the pistol, so I won't be using the pistol anymore. With my firepower increasing, I make my way to the yellow key where I run into another new demon, the pinky. A bit tougher than the imp, requiring two to three shotgun blasts to kill, these guys try to close in and corner you. The bright side is that they only have melee attacks, so as long as I keep them at range, I'll be fine. Phobos Lab introduces us to another new demon, the invisible pinky, also called the specter. In well-lit environments, these guys aren't much of a threat, but in dark areas, they're an absolute menace. I love how this barrel's explosion was so powerful it blew the imp's corpse through the window at me. This level is a bit trickier than the others so far. In the hallway I get surprised twice, first by this group of demons, then by this specter in the dim lighting. Beyond the blue door is this creepy room with flashing lights and explosive barrels everywhere. I keep my back to the wall and lay down a base of fire as I make my way to the exit. Level 6, Central Processing, is kind enough to give you a shotgun right away, but this is the most mazy level so far. I need all three keys, red, yellow, and blue, to progress. Grabbing a rad suit gives me temporary protection from toxic sludge while I explore. I run around these halls for a while, blasting demons and jamming out. After grabbing the yellow key, I try out the rocket launcher. Ow, okay, let's be careful with that. Computer Station is the penultimate level of this first episode, and it doesn't pull any punches. Right away, we're greeted with a specter and a several imps. Treat with shotgun and explosive barrels. This level is the biggest yet, with large areas locked off by key doors. Fortunately, I can use the corpses of my fallen enemies to see where I've already been. Whenever I see living demons, I start licking my chops, ready to rip and tear through them. While exploring, I find a couple secrets, including this map of the area and this hidden pack of ammo. After running around for a while, I find this switch which opens a wall leading to the exit. I spray lead into the faces of the demons that come rushing out, and it's onto the last level of Episode 1. Phobos Anomaly starts off with an earth-shattering bang as I blow up all these pinkies with barrels. The music is ominous, foreshadowing an epic battle. I'm greeted by two barons of hell, the toughest demons so far. They throw these green projectiles that do a ton of damage, but fortunately they're easily dealt with by the rocket launcher. At the top of these stairs is a teleporter to the end. Coming out the other side, I'm torn to shreds by demons, and when I die, the mission ends. Once you beat the big badasses and clear out the moon base, you're supposed to win, aren't you? Aren't you? Where's your fat reward and ticket home? What the hell is this? It's not supposed to end this way. It stinks like rotten meat, but looks like the lost Demos base. Looks like you're stuck on the shores of hell. The only way out is through. Starting up level 1, Demos Anomaly, immediately we can see things are different. The outside looks hellish and the interior walls have these stone bricks instead of the Phobos base design we saw throughout the first episode. Walking through this upside down cross we take some health damage and there are now teleporters connecting different parts of the level. I find the shotgun near a horde of monsters and some pools of blood. God, I love this game. After hitting this switch, a new monster is revealed, the Kaka Demon. 
These floating meatballs are probably the most iconic enemy from the original Doom. Big, menacing, and shooting these red-blue fireballs, they take a lot of punishment to kill. After getting jump-scared by an imp, I finally make it to the level exit. Level 2, Containment Area, is a return to UAC-style aesthetics with all these little boxes, but don't let that fool you. In the first area, we find a Berserk power-up, which temporarily tints my screen red and boosts my punching damage. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Just outside the box room, we can see that Hell is taking over this UAC facility. Pentagrams line the sickly green halls, and wall-mounted skulls act as switches. These skull-adorned walls come down to crush me as I try to pass, but what's this? I find a hidden chainsaw and I get to try it out for the first time on another new demon, the Lost Souls, honestly the most annoying enemy in the game. After running around a while and grabbing some keys, I flip the switch to reveal the path to the level exit. On to level 3. Refinery is another UAC environment that's been corrupted by hell. In the first room on the right, I use my chainsaw to tear through the hordes. Hell yeah. I grab the berserk power up and my punches are so powerful that the enemies explode. Yeah, rip and tear. This level is really making me feel powerful, except for this room. The flickering lights really creep me out. The next level, Demos Lab, is huge. It has all these toxic floors and massive rooms with tons of enemies. There are traps like these crushers and this tiny narrow path with a rad suit at the end of it. I get surprised by a Baron of Hell, but in the previous level I picked up a plasma gun. I spray him with plasma and fry him quickly. Yeah, that's totally not a trap. There are so many secret paths and fake walls in this level, I got a little lost here for a while. Lots of traps, too. You really have to be on your toes. Going through this teleporter, I see the most disturbing wall texture so far. The faces of the damned stare horrifically at me through these bars. Near the end, I got a bit stuck because I didn't see the skull switch right next to the teleporter, but eventually I found it. On to level 5. Command Center is a pretty forgettable level, except it has a ton of demons. I wonder what's behind this door. Nope. Sometimes when you see a horde of pinkies coming at you, you just have to spray and pray. Don't really have too much to say about this one, other than I love the feeling of gunning down large groups of enemies. Halls of the Damned gives you a rocket launcher right at the beginning, so you know it's going to get crazy. It looks like a small level at first, but as you flip switches to reveal more and more paths, you realize just how big this level really is. There are these really dark hallways that make navigating difficult, but you can find these night vision goggles that make everything a lot easier. After running around and exploring this mazy level for a while, I die for the first time from this crusher trap. Ugh. This time I push through, using the chain gun to decimate the group of lost souls, imps, and pinkies. After several minutes of shotgunning pinkies in tight corridors, I finally make my way back to the level exit and move on to the penultimate level of episode 2. Spawning Vats is another big mazy level. I love the environmental storytelling here. In this room with all the boxes, there are tons of dead demons laying around near a single dead marine. What happened here? Be careful on this ledge, because if you fall, you're out of luck. Near the end of the level, I get cornered by a cacodemon, but thankfully the chain gun can stunlock cacodemons, preventing them from attacking. Finally, time to finish this episode. The Tower of Babel starts off ominously, with the corpses of four barons of hell strung up on the walls. What could have done this? Outside, giant mechanical footsteps give us our answer. It's the big guy, the iconic cyber demon. His rockets deal deadly damage, so I strafe to avoid them while blasting him with plasma. After running out of ammo, I fire my own rockets at him until eventually he explodes. Nothing but a hoof remaining in a pool of blood. You've done it! The hideous cyber demon lord that ruled the lost Demos moon base has been slain, and you are triumphant. But where are you? You clamber to the edge of the moon and look down to see the awful truth. Demos floats above hell itself. You've never heard of anyone escaping from hell, but you'll make the bastards sorry they ever heard of you. Quickly, you rappel down to the surface of hell. The first level of episode 3, Hell Keep, immediately shows off the cool new environment of hell itself. The ground looks like it's covered in intestines or something, and the blood-red sky and strange mountains in the distance... We're definitely not on Mars anymore. The beginning of this level is kind of annoying as I have to pistol a cacodemon to death, taking about 40 rounds to do so. Grabbing the shotgun puts me in this trap of damaging blood, so I quickly get out of there. In the exit room, I find a secret area with a rocket launcher, and we're off to level 2. Slav of Despair is infamous for being tight, claustrophobic, and shaped like a hand if you look at the map. I navigate the corridors carefully, trying to conserve ammo until I find the chain gun behind this wall. Hmm, I wonder what's behind here? Ugh, alright, come here. There are multiple spots in this map where if you're not careful you'll get cornered and die. Thankfully I act quickly and was able to adapt. Since a lot of the demons in this level don't drop ammo when they die, I end it with low resources. Great. Level 3, Pandemonium, showcases the indoor hellish aesthetic with all these demon faces on the walls, intestine columns, eyeball switch, and devious enemy placement. You have to be super careful and check your corners. I'm talking lost souls and alcoves, drop floors with pinkies, and a baron of hell in this tight little space. After getting lost for a while, I stumble on a secret new weapon, the BFG 9000. We'll be putting that to good use soon, but for now, I just head to the exit. House of Pain is an awesome level. I love the music here, and you know it's going to be a good one when they give you a rocket launcher right away. 
Walking into this room, I decided it's time to try out the BFG. Oh, that felt good. The environment here is so cool. I mean, look at this. Is this not the most insane place to fight in? I can only imagine the reactions of people in the 90s seeing this for the first time. I find these demons praying to a big head on the wall, so of course I blow them all up. Near the end, I get cornered by a Baron of Hell, a Pinky, and a Cacodemon, so the BFG comes out again. What a level. The Unholy Cathedral is shaped like a castle, which is pretty cool, but navigating the level is a little annoying. I have to go into these teleporters to get to different parts of the castle, but there are so many I often forget where they all lead. So here's the level exit. I see it right here. I could have gone in, but I decided to check around the corner. Ooh, I wonder what's here. Of course it's a trap. Tons of demons start teleporting in and I barely survive with the help of my chain gun and BFG. Level 6, Mount Erebus, is a big open area with tons of demons to kill and a lake of lava around the outside. One of my favorite designs. There's a big building made of this hideous texture called Fire Blue, and tons of smaller buildings filled with hordes of demons to release. Death number 3 happens here because of carelessness and these damn annoying lost souls. After taking forever to find the blue key, I finally locate the level exit, which is really well hidden. The penultimate level of episode 3, Limbo, features these damaging lakes of blood that you'll have to cross multiple times as you solve the teleporter puzzle here. It can be pretty confusing at times, but at least there are tons of demons to keep you occupied. I love the atmosphere of this level with all this red, it feels so different from all the levels we explored in the first two episodes. Getting the yellow key can be pretty tricky because you have to make this jump which I miss a couple times. Eventually I figure out the puzzle and find the level exit. Time for a boss battle. The last level of Inferno is Dis, and it features a new boss enemy, the Spider Mastermind. There are other demons around here too, but in the center of the map is a BFG. You know what to do. In just a few blasts, the Spider Mastermind falls and we beat the episode. The loathsome spider demon that masterminded the invasion of the moon bases and caused so much death and destruction has had its ass kicked for all time. A hidden doorway opens and you enter. You've proven too tough for hell to contain. And now hell at last plays fair. For you emerge from the door to see the green fields of earth, home at last. You wonder what's been happening to earth while you were battling evil unleashed. It's good that no hellspawn could have come through that door with you. This final chapter of Doom is no joke. These are the hardest levels in the game, possibly in the whole Doom series, and the first two levels are the toughest ones. Hell Beneath kicks off with a bunch of shotgunners teleporting in everywhere with very little cover around you. After I grab these innocuous looking health files, a ton of imps start flooding in and a freaking baron of hell chases me around the tiny ledge above some toxic sludge. After barely surviving that encounter, I grab the red key and quickly book it out of there as more demons spawn in. Death number 4 comes at this door because I didn't notice I was getting chased by an imp. The next time I'm a bit better about saving ammo, but still, just look at what happens when I grab the blue key. I decide to try the level again because there's no way I'm walking into level 2 with 1 health. Okay, that's better. Perfect Hatred is a sadistic, evil level. Just look at this first area. The bottom has damaging floors and only one rad suit, so you better be careful not to fall. Death number 5 came when I grabbed the plasma gun and got ambushed by three barons of hell on this narrow ledge. How is this a second level on normal difficulty? This time I used the rad suit to my advantage to fight the barons from down below. After finally killing those guys, I grabbed the yellow key, run back here, hit the switch, and unleash even more barons. The journey to get the blue key is almost as harrowing. Tiny dark corridors with tough demons and little ammo. Yikes. Thank god for the plasma rifle. When I get to the blue column, I hear a cyber demon. Thankfully, I remember a trick to take care of him. Run up here to open this door and unleash the caca demons, then run back here and take the teleporter to instantly kill the cyber demon and get a secret BFG. We'll definitely be needing that. But for now, we're finally done with the hardest levels. Sever the Wicked is a fun level, a nice little come down after the chaos of those first two. Wide open areas with lots of demons, nice. I run around these wooden buildings, blasting groups of zombies with my shotgun. Oh yeah, that's therapeutic. It's not all easy though, there's this part where I drop down into a lava pit surrounded by enemies, and then here I get jump scared by a shotgunner and some cacodemons. I got a little lost looking for the exit because I didn't realize you were supposed to throw yourself down into the lava canyon to find this hidden door. Oh well, on to the next one. Unruly Evil is a very simple and straightforward level. Again, after the first two, this level is a breeze. Not really much to say about this one, I cut through the hordes with my plasma gun and find the exit in about 3 minutes. They Will Repent features more of that green stone demonic castle atmosphere. It's a pretty big level, mazy and easy to get lost in. After grabbing the yellow key from this precarious ledge, I noticed that I didn't actually need it. I could have just jumped through this window to get to the exit. Oh well, at least I got the BFG. Against the Wickedly starts off in this cramped little path, but then it opens up. Time for the BFG. The rest of the level is actually pretty tough though. The idea here is to use the central teleporter to access all the different areas of the tower. The annoying thing is that every time you drop down to access the teleporter, you have to stand in some damaging lava for a couple seconds unless you have a rad suit. The worst part by far is the end where you have to fight a cyber demon in a really tight space.
Eventually, I finally got him by shooting rockets from this spot. Thank God for quick saves. Level 7 and Hell Followed is a really fun one. It's a little mazy, but not too bad. There's this big courtyard with tons of demons, great for spraying with the plasma gun. All the demons make an appearance here, and you'll have to think quickly to react to some of the devious little traps in this level. After slaughtering everything in my path, I step on the central platform and flip the switch, bringing me to the last level. Unto the Cruel starts with an absolute slaughter fest as I tear through these shotgunners with my chain gun. There are tons of demons in these hallways, fodder for my firepower. After finding the red and yellow keys, I enter the final room. Demons are everywhere, and the spider mastermind makes another appearance. First, I focus on taking out all the support demons before attacking the spider herself. After several volleys of rockets, she explodes, crumbling into a bloody mess of brains and metal. When she's dead, the central pillar drops, revealing the exit, and I take the plunge. The spider mastermind must have sent forth its legions of hellspawn before your final confrontation with that terrible beast from hell. But you stepped forward and brought forth eternal damnation and suffering upon the horde as a true hero would in the face of something so evil. Besides, someone was going to pay for what happened to Daisy, your pet rabbit. But now, you see spread before you more potential pain and jibitude as a nation of demons run amok among our cities. Next stop, Hell on Earth. The final cutscene shows a sweet little bunny in a field. Whimsical music plays, but slowly gets more distorted. A hellish glow burns in the sky, and it's revealed that our precious pet rabbit Daisy's head is impaled on a spike. These demons are gonna pay. The original Doom was groundbreaking for so many reasons. Never before was first person shooting so fluid, smooth, and satisfying. The atmosphere and music is so badass, and it's still so fun to play this game today. There aren't many games that hold up as well as Doom, and it really deserves its place as the grandfather of an entire genre. And we're just getting started. If you're hyped for Doom the Dark Ages, subscribe to this channel and join me next time for Doom 2. That's all for today everyone, thank you so much for watching, and peace out for now.